any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That's Clark, not Asimov. I'm sure a little cross-pollination won't hurt. Hey, Kevin Fennec here, and mathematical prophecy turns into religion and control. And that's why Harry wanted to create a second foundation, to keep the first one in check. Something Gale interfered with, and so leads the path to Armageddon. Well, that's the story anyway. On the Emperor's side, we get a glimpse of what the clones do to overcome the effects of genetic divergence, which seems to mostly concern itself with table manners. And we also learn that Foundation sends clerics to the systems abandoned by Empire to essentially recruit them to their side with flashy magic shows. Hence author C. Clarke's quote. We meet one of those clerics, Polly Verisov, who's the only one still alive from the last time Harry Seldon stepped through the vault on Terminus. He looks damn good for a 148 year old. And he's quite a character. And Gale looks to the future to see a devastated world. Hence the title of this episode. She not only looks into the future, she was actually there. Nice parlor trick. I don't know, something felt really off with this episode. From the writing down to the acting, it felt like we were seeing a series of tableaus rather than actual believable performances. That's quite a difference from what we've experienced before. And that's why it's so jarring. Take Harry on board the beggar, for instance. We learn he's been conscious in the construct ever since Gale trapped him there. So, for well over a century. Exactly. So he's understandably incredibly pissed off. Unimaginably furious, in fact. And yet, Salvor has for his help and all that's forgotten. Well, they were in danger at the time, but once the danger's passed, it's just, let's get down to business mode. It didn't feel right. And the same applies for the clerics of Foundation we see on the backwater planet of Siwina. You have to ask yourself why the local population would buy into these cheap parlor tricks anyway. And why does the Vault on Terminus act in such a devastatingly cryptic, some would say godlike way? Is that how mathematical predictions work now? And more importantly, how did Salvor change our hairstyle from one scene to the next? Obviously we have a lot of questions, and this episode seems to set us up for the rest of the season. But why be so stilted about it? Am I watering a glimpse of darkness? Two paws. Oh, I like the fancy new black paws. Yeah, I wanted to make it clearer how high the paw rating went. People didn't realize a fox only has four paws. Well, you have to admit it's an unusual system. Humans usually go for three stars, or five, or even up to ten. Four? That's different, and could easily lead to confusion. Hopefully this will make it more visually obvious. But anyway, what did you think of this episode? Share your thoughts in the comments, live long, and may the force be with you.